Hey, good morning. So this is my second Facebook Live today. I apologize if I'm uh, flooding you with too much uh, information here or too many podcasts, but um, you know, you can uh, come back to this post later. And uh, I thought I would answer a question today from Jean Maroch, Jean Maroch, M-R-O-C-H. And Jean is asking uh, a question from, uh, uh, you are the universe discovering your cosmic self and why it matters. And uh, I'm happy to answer it. But before that, I want to make an announcement. Uh, I'm asking and requesting you to send in your questions uh, starting today, even now, uh, as we finish, or before we finish. The questions are to be sent to um, info, I-N-F-O, at jio.com, J-I-Y-O.com. Once again, please send your questions uh, starting today to info, I-N-F-O, at jio.com, uh, preferably using a Gmail account. So once again, the questions should be addressed to info at jio.com. And I will answer your questions every day. Lisa, yes, info at jio.com. I-N-F-O um, at jio, J-I-Y-O dot com. And I'll continue in these discussions. So today's uh, question from Jean Maraj is constructs. It's on constructs. Are they different from what is natural and what is man-made, like a tree or fish, and that stool or sofa or book? How do you explain trees, clouds, water, all things that were here a billion years before humans? So basically, uh, she's asking, Jean is asking, or oh, Jean is asking, I don't know, he, she, but Jean is asking whether um, uh, whether um, uh, the universe existed before humans showed up. And so if the universe existed before humans showed up, um, then um, how can we say that the universe is a human construct? By the way, I've had that question from uh, famous cosmologists like Lawrence Krauss and uh, all the other cosmologists like Brian, um, Cox and uh, Neil Tyson, of course, they kind of ridicule this idea that um, the universe uh, is a human construct, um, um, or I think they do, because they make the same argument that the universe was there before humans showed up. So I'll try and explain this uh, very slowly because it's not, <laughs> not, not an easy easy, um, uh, it's not an easy question to answer, but there is an answer, and if you get the answer, then you know what reality is. As I said, if you get the answer, you'll know what reality is. Okay, so let me start with right there. Reality is awareness of existence, and therefore also existence. There's existence, there's awareness of existence. Existence knows itself always as an experience. Existence can only know itself as an experience, otherwise <clears throat> there's no knowing of experience. <clears throat> Once again, existence can only know itself as an experience. Uh, otherwise, um, there is no knowing of experience, right? So, knowing is an attribute of consciousness. Consciousness knows itself as existence. Is that okay? Consciousness knows itself as existence. I know I exist. I know that everything I'm experiencing exists. But who's the I that knows? And what we're saying is 
that the I that knows is awareness or consciousness which knows itself both as the subject and the object of experience. So I, awareness, impersonal, the big I, knows itself right now as this and everything this is experiencing. Like this, like this, like this, like this, like this. So this is right now human experience. I, I, the awareness knows itself as this body-mind, tentatively called Deepak Chopra. And then all these objects which are being experienced. But experience is not just these objects, experience is also this. I experience this body-mind and this, because I am the witness of that which I call mind, thoughts, images, feelings, and that which I call body, sense perceptions, and wallet, and book, which are human constructs around sense perceptions. But you say, well, that might be true, as, as uh, Jean says, for man-made objects, what about clouds? What about trees? What about uh, rivers? What about galaxies? And uh, the answer is, the word cloud is a name for a human experience. Okay, the word tree is a name for a human experience. I see that Jean is here. Okay, so the word cloud is a name for a human experience. The word tree is a name for a human experience. The word uh, river is a name for a human experience. The word galaxy is a name for a human experience. But scientists go further than that. They break down the human experience into abstract notions like subatomic particles, force fields, electromagnetic fields, space-time and gravity. These are human names for modes of knowing and experience, and human modes of knowing and experience. Okay, so in the same way, in the same way that this is a human construct, the body is also a human construct. Um, because at a deeper level, the body is awareness, knowing itself, as sense perceptions in the form of qualia. Qualia means qualities of experience. Qualities of experience. And these qualities of experience are shape, color, form, texture, taste, smell, sound, and interpretations of those experiences that we call thoughts. Okay? So the entire universe is a human construct right now. But you say, surely there were dinosaurs before humans came along. We can see the fossil record of these dinosaurs. We can see the fossil record of many, many animals that are now extinct. Okay, so what? when we look at the fossil, first of all, first of all the word fossil is a human construct for an experience of shape, form, color, taste, texture, which is a modification of consciousness now. Okay, so then we construct in our imagination a dinosaur that existed more than 65 million years ago. Okay, so that dinosaur is a human construct. But surely something existed. Okay. So we can say, awareness knew itself then as the experience that we call a dinosaur, we humans call a dinosaur, and then the, the universe that get, got, went along with the perceptual experiences of that dinosaur, whatever that was, we can't say. In fact, we can't say right now what the experience of a chicken is or for 
a goose is or an eagle is or a bat is or a crocodile is. It's a species of consciousness having its own experience. We can guess, but we do not have that experience. We do not know what that experience is, the level of experience itself, unless you can transcend all experiences and then kind of incarnate as that consciousness. But that's a whole other story. Okay? So when we, we, we construct the past of the universe um, in the same way, we construct space-time, energy, information, galaxies, bosons, uh, gluons, electrons, protons, force fields, gravity. Uh, these are words, names, description for modes of knowing and, and experience. And who knows? What knows? Consciousness it knows itself as the biological organism that we call human being, which is actually better, we should say, being human. Consciousness knows itself as the biological organism, human being, and the universe it experiences as a perceptual phenomenon in human consciousness, human universe. And the past of the universe is imagined in human consciousness in human terms. So when we imagine the Big Bang, we imagine dinosaurs, we imagine the formation of stars, we imagine um, uh, you know, the first uh, atoms, um, we uh, actually uh, uh, are imagining them in human perceptual terms as if we were there at that time. But of course we weren't there. So that past of the universe is an imagined past in human consciousness as a perceptual experience uh, presuming that humans were there. Jean Marat says, but it is real. It is real as an experience, but it is false because it is only one mode of experience. Okay, it's only one mode of experience. It's only the human mode of experience. And you know, in, in, the, in the larger domain of experience, there are almost infinite modes of experience. So the past of the universe is constructed by us, human beings, as a human experience. What did it look like? to a dinosaur, or what did the world, the universe, look like when there were the human constructs that we call dinosaurs? Because dinosaurs are human constructs for modes of knowing and experience. I know this is difficult because it's so difficult to get out of our constructs. We get so bamboozled, even scientists, the best scientists, you know, they construct hadron uh, colliders, they have a little wisp of experience on a on a track um, uh, that's a boson that's an electron that's a higgs uh, field uh, these are names given to uh, modes of knowing and experience and even as we know them it's gone it can't be real because it's gone before you know it okay so in that sense, we are all dream characters in a dream world that we have all constructed. And just to think of, and this is an analogy I'm borrowing from Rupert Spira, there's a screen, television screen, there are all these characters, you're one of the characters and you're interacting with the other characters. And the story goes on, it's a qualia program, and uh, when the story is over, then the modulations of the screen subside, all that's left is the screen. The screen is the screen of consciousness and um, it's modulating itself as all these dream characters. It is modulating itself as all these dream characters. So the past of the universe is uh, a dream in human consciousness. The present of the universe is also a dream in hum human consciousness. So, um, in Rishikesh, you missed the first part, you can come back to it later. 
Okay, so the past of the universe is a human dream, dreamed up by all of us, and we've agreed on the constructs that define the dream uh, as human beings, mostly scientific constructs in human consciousness, as human experience. And the present is also a dream because it can't be held on to. It's too evanescent. You, you, as soon as you see it, it's gone. Okay? As soon as you perceive it, it's gone. The future is a dream, so the whole thing is a dream. Okay? A human dream. And other animals and other species, we have given them names, we have given them a taxonomy, they're part of our dream. They're also having their own dream, but as we perceive other animals, they're part of our dream. Okay. So the present of the universe is the dream, the past is the dream, the future is the dream. Waking up means waking up from the dream, Salongo. Everything recycles in nanoseconds. You got it, Salongo. Everything recycles in nanoseconds. Not only does it recycle, but every time it recycles, it evolves into a slightly different appearance. So the universe that we see now is not the universe seen a hundred years ago, or a thousand years ago, or a million years ago, by whatever was doing the scene. Okay, because a million years ago, um, primates, humans, uh, weren't there. Primates were doing the scene. So, you wake up. And waking up is to the presence in which the dream is happening in an eternal now. And waking up is the presence, the spirit, the consciousness, the awareness in which the dream is happening in an eternal now. Here is a way to think about it. Noise is a mental experience. Taste, smell, texture, these are mental experiences. In turn, the mental experiences are modulations of consciousness. We call these modulations of consciousness qualia. Qualia meaning quality of experience. Quality of experience. Hardness is a quality of experience. Softness is a quality of experience. Taste is a quality of experience. Smell is a quality of experience. Texture is a quality of experience. So this is a quality of experience. The body is a quality of experience. Rainbows. But once we give them names, then those qualities become human constructs. We objectify the experience as the object of experience. And as scientists, we even go deeper and uh, make abstractions or models called uh, atoms, subatomic particles, force fields, gravity, space-time. Okay, these are abstract symbols of qualities of experience. There is nothing other than experience. Okay, And then qualities of experience and then models created around those qualities of experience, atoms, particles, force fields, gravity, space, time, energy, information, matter. The problem with many scientists is that they get bamboozled by their own constructs. And so then they replace the model with the reality. The reality cannot be a model. The reality cannot be a symbol. The reality cannot be a qualia because even the mind is a quality of experience. So what can reality be? Reality can only be that in which those qualia arise, in which those constructs are made, those models, in which those symbols replace reality, in which there are interpretations, in which there is imagination. So reality cannot be anything that is an experience. If you can see it and perceive it, it's not reality. Nothing perceivable 
or conceivable can be reality. Nothing, I'll repeat that many times, nothing conceivable or perceivable can be reality. Reality can only be that in which conceptions and perceptions arise and subside in an eternal now. So, I'll be back in 15 seconds and complete this. So where I had left off was reality cannot be anything that is perceivable or conceivable. Reality can only be that which gives rise to conceptions, perceptions and interpretations of those perceptions and conceptions that we call human constructs. So I know this is, a lot of you are struggling with this. Maha Abbas and 29 others shared. I really appreciate it. I appreciate the sharing. And remember, you can post your questions now on info at jio.com. So I'll start to conclude. Uh, if you can name it, if you can describe it, if you can see it, if you can t uh, touch it, taste it, smell it, think about it, imagine it, um, in any way give it a name or um, an appearance and a form, then um, it's not real. What is real cannot be named, cannot be conceived, cannot be imagined, cannot be perceived, and even cannot be described. But without that, there would be no name, no form, no perception, no conception, no imagination. That which is formless, but as is appearing as all form and phenomena. So even you as a person is not real. A person is a process in awareness. And it's a continuing process. This is what I call a person. Okay, the person and the scenery around the person, they are together, they are entangled, they, they are inseparable. And they are both processes in awareness. Awareness modifying itself as an ongoing process. There's no such thing as a body or a mind. Teresa says, why bother? Well, because if you really understand it, you'll understand that you're immortal, that you're timeless, that you're not subject to birth and death, that the real you cannot suffer, that the real you cannot grasp or doesn't need to grasp or be addicted or be afraid or identify with the ego and create constructs like nationalism and tribalism and religion and God, God as humans describe God. If you can conceive God, conceptualize God, imagine God, it can't be God. Because the moment you do that, you limit God. Okay? God, if you want to use that word, is the invisible, formless, ineffable, intangible that experiences itself as form and phenomena, as subject and object, as knower and known, as uh, seer and scenery uh, in an eternal now. And behind, behind all constructs, you are that divine being. Okay? You are that divine being. But we're using words, 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 words. What a gift that we have. In fact, I, um, I make my living selling words, but words camouflage reality. First there was the word, and the word was made into flesh. First there was the word, and the word was made into flesh. And everything else that goes along with that which we call the flesh, the person. There's no such thing as a body, there's no such thing as a mind. In fact, there's no such thing as uh, a universe. 
these are human constructs. Awareness knows itself, has experience. The experience in its raw form is qualia. The qualia are modified forms of experience. Okay, the qualia are the arising and subsiding of sensations, images, feelings and thoughts in awareness. Only awareness is eternally now. Only awareness is eternally now. <laughs> when you really get that, the only response is laughter and bliss and happiness and joy. The only response to knowing reality is joy and happiness. And you end all your searching because you are the seer that's doing the search. You are the seer that is doing the seeking. What you're looking for is that which is looking. So there's no need to look, just be, be aware. Being aware is all that you need. Are you confused? I hope not. I hope not. But come back to this video. Uh, it'll be everywhere, also on YouTube. And send me your questions from today onwards. Not only on this book, You Are the Universe, Discovering Yourself. Send me any question at... Um, Info at jio.com. Info at jio.com. So, are we all hallucinating? Somebody asked, yes, but you know, the hallucination sometimes is a pleasant dream and sometimes is a nightmare. And uh, the choice is yours. I have always believed I figure it out, I will cease to, I will cease to what? Jean asked. Well, uh, you will cease to be afraid. Okay, I'm going to go after this and look at uh, info at chayo.com to make sure that you're sending your questions. I'll keep reminding you and that's where I look for your questions personally and then I will uh, answer them there and then we will continue our joyful uh, awareness uh, uh, exploration. So long ago, you're a champ. Kristen, thank you for being here. Susan Blackmore, probing I meant. Dreaming is awareness. No, awareness is dreaming. Surely, label ceasing. Yes, you know, that's a good start. Start with not giving labels, descriptions, definitions, unless it's necessary. You know, we need our constructs to navigate our experience as human beings, um, but um, we should always be aware that our constructs uh, are not reality. Reality is that in which constructs are made. Jeet Maraj, I hope I've answered your question. Thanks for asking this. Uh, and once again, info at jio.com is where I'll be checking in for your questions and I'll answer at least one question every day. Take care, be joyful, is the only healthy response to existence. <laughs>